Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what happens if the tubing that you're flowing oxygen through catches fire. What does it look like? Okay, so I have here a tank of oxygen gas. So what you need in order for something to burn is you need fuel, you need oxygen, and you need heat. Now normally we just take oxygen for granted because it's all around us, but it, there's not actually a lot in the air, it's mostly nitrogen. Only 20% about of it is oxygen. Now regular things around your house that you think of as flammable, like a piece of paper or a piece of wood, when you try to light a piece of wood on fire, it kind of takes a while and it takes a lot of heat to get it going and then it starts to burn. Now the main reason it doesn't just burst into flames like crazy is just because it doesn't have enough oxygen. So if you can just provide fuels with enough oxygen, then they burn very quickly. So for example, the explosive nitroglycerin already has oxygen and nitrogen in it, and it doesn't rely on the oxygen from the air, so that's how it can explode and react so fast, because it just reacts with the oxygen and nitrogen molecules already contained within it. So what that means is that you can basically turn anything into a mini explosive by just adding more oxygen to it. So for example, if I just burn some sugar mixed with baking soda, you can see that it's not that flammable by itself. It burns for a little bit and a little bit of ash comes out. But then when I add oxygen to it, you can see how much more violent the reaction is. It's extremely hot, extremely bright. So it looks as though the gas coming out of the end of the tube here is flammable. But that's not what's flammable. The fuel is the sugar, but we're just providing it way more oxygen so it can react much faster. So oxygen tanks like this are used in labs all over the place. And one danger with these oxygen tanks is using plastic tubing like this. So let me show you what happens if you flow oxygen through plastic tubing that somehow gets a spark on it. Okay, first we'll start with my silicone tubing. So what I'm going to show you, do not try this at home. So what I showed you right there was basically the perfect ratio of fuel to oxygen. It gets extremely bright and extremely explosive. <laughs> but what if we turn up the oxygen even more? So now here's what it looks like if we use a higher flow rate of oxygen. So what's interesting is we speed up the flow rate of oxygen, it cools the tube down so the fire can't move up it as quickly. So it doesn't actually make it burn faster, it actually slows down the burning, but at the end where it is burning, it's much more explosive. So when you have a high flow rate of oxygen, it's basically like a sparkler. So now here's what it looks like when the flow rate is even lower. So when the flow rate is lower, it doesn't cool the inside of the tube. So basically the fire could just move up the tube, burning the inner coating of the tube as it moves up. So it's really neat to see what the different flow rates of oxygen can do to the rate of burning. So depending on your flow rate of gas that you're flowing through it, when a spark happens to occur, you can either get something that's extremely explosive or like a firework or something, or that just slowly burns up the tube. And then here's what a vinyl tube looks like with a medium flow rate. So not too fast, not too slow, just the right mixture. It gets extremely flammable.
And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.